Although modern man until recently has viewed and celebrated the meaning of the history known to him as epitomizing progress and evolution, the truth, as professed by traditional man, is quite the opposite. In all the ancient testimonies of traditional humanity, it is possible to find, in various forms, the idea of a regression or a fall. From originally higher states, beings have stooped to states increasingly conditioned by human, mortal, and contingent elements. This involutive process allegedly began in a very distant past. The term that best characterizes it is the Eddic term, Ragnarok, the Twilight of the Gods. In the traditional world, this teaching was not expressed in a vague and generic form, but rather was articulated in the organic doctrine of the Four Ages, which can be found with a large degree of uniformity in different civilizations. According to tradition, the actual sense of history and the genesis of what I have labelled, generally speaking, as the modern world, results from a process of gradual decadence through four cycles or generations. Ovid and Hesiod each describe history in a cycle of ages, each defined by a different metal, each more base than the last. The Iron Age is the last of the ages before the rebirth of the Golden Age. Third came the people of the Bronze Age with fiercer natures, readier to indulge in savage warfare but not yet vicious. The harsh Iron Age was last. Immediately every kind of wickedness erupted into the age of baser natures. Truth, shame and honour vanished. In their place were fraud, deceit and trickery, violence and pernicious desires. They set sails to the wind, though as yet the seamen had poor knowledge of their use, and the ship's keels that once were trees standing amongst high mountains now leaped through uncharted waves. The land that was common to all as the light of the sun is, and the air was marked out to its furthest boundaries by weary surveyors. Not only did they demand the crops and food the rich soil owed them, but they entered the bowels of the earth, and excavating brought up the wealth it had concealed in Stygian shade. Wealth that incites men to crime. And now harmful iron appeared, and gold more harmful than iron. War came, whose struggles employ both, waving clashing arms with blood-stained hands. They lived on plunder. Friend was not safe with friend, relative with relative. Kindness was rare between brothers. Husbands longed for the death of their wives, wives for the death of their husbands. Murderous stepmothers mixed deadly aconite, and sons inquired into their father's years before their time. Piety was dead, and virgin Astra, last of all the immortals to depart, herself abandoned the blood-drenched earth. Ovid goes on to write how Jupiter destroys the human race, but that it is then recreated for a new age. The end of the final cycle of ages is described in the Old Norse source, Verlusper, the prophecy of the Sirius. The end of the cycle is called Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. It begins with several signs. Now Wolfgarm howls loud before Gnipa cave, the fetters will burst and the wolf run free. Much do I know and more can see of the fate of the gods, the mighty in fight. Brother shall fight brother and fell each other, and sister's son shall kinship stain. Hard it is on earth with severe whoredom. Axe time, sword time, shields are sundered, wind time, wolf time, ere the world falls nor ever shall man spare each other. Then other monstrous elemental beings called Jurtens are unleashed on the earth and on the gods with whom they do battle. 
most of the gods and the men will die. But a few of each will survive and inherit a renewed earth to start the next cycle. In the Book of Celtic Myths and Legend by Peter Beresford Ellis, there is a reconstructed myth of the end of the cycle of this age. Ellis cites the Battle of Moitura as a source for this story. But there is also a prophecy of Bath the Crow Goddess at the end of a Celtic foundational myth. Peace up to heaven, heaven down to earth, Earth beneath heaven, strength in each, a cup very full, full of honey, mead in abundance, summer in winter, I shall not see a world which will be dear to me, summer without blossoms, cattle will be without milk, women without modesty, men without valour, conquests without a king, woods without mast, Sea without produce, false judgments of old men, false precedents of lawyers, every man a betrayer, every son a reeler. The son will go to the bed of his father, the father will go to the bed of his son, each his brother's brother-in-law. He will not seek any woman outside his home. An evil time, son deceives his father, daughter will deceive her mother. Much of the writings of the Kali Yuga are not from the original Vedic literature but from later medieval sources. However, as the Indo-European scholar Georges Domizil has written, it is evident from later Hindu sources that they contain parallel myths of Indo-European origin that are present in other Indo-European sources, and therefore it can be safely concluded that not all of the Aryan myths were included in the original Vedic literature, and some of these were later written down in medieval literature. The Kali Yuga is the name of the final of the four ages of the world. Kali Yuga is associated with the demon Kali. Rulers will become unreasonable. They will levy taxes unfairly. Rulers will no longer see it as their duty to promote spirituality or to protect their subjects. They will become a danger to the world. Folk will start migrating, seeking countries where wheat and barley form the staple food source. At the end of Kali Yuga, where there exist no topics on the subject of God, even at the residences of so-called saints and respectable gentlemen of the three higher castes, and when nothing is known of the techniques of sacrifice, even by word, at that time the Lord will appear as the supreme chastiser. Avarice and wrath will be common. Humans will openly display animosity towards each other. Ignorance of Dharma will occur. Folk will have thoughts of murder with no justification and will see nothing wrong in that. Lust will be viewed as socially acceptable and sexual intercourse will be seen as the central requirement of life. Sin will increase exponentially while virtue will fade and cease to flourish. Folk will take vows and break them soon after. Folk will become addicted to intoxicating substances. Gurus will no longer be respected and their students will attempt to injure them. Their teachings will be insulted and followers of karma will wrest control of the mind from all human beings. Brahmins will not be learned or honored. Kshatriyas will not be brave. Vaishyas will not be just in their dealings and the caste system will be abolished. Religion, truthfulness, cleanliness, tolerance, mercy, duration of life, physical strength and memory will all diminish day by day because of the powerful influence of the age of Kali. In Kali Yuga, wealth alone will be considered the sign of a man's good birth. Proper behavior and fine qualities and law and justice will be applied only on the basis of one's power. 
Men and women will live together merely because of superficial attraction, and success in business will depend on deceit. Womanliness and manliness will be judged according to one's expertise in sex, and a man will be known as a Brahmana just by his wearing a thread. A person's spiritual position will be ascertained merely according to external symbols, and on that same basis folk will change from one spiritual order to the next. A person's propriety will be seriously questioned if he does not earn a good living, and one who is very clever at juggling words will be considered a learned scholar. A person will be judged unholy if he does not have money, and hypocrisy will be accepted as virtue. Marriage will be arranged simply by verbal agreement, and a person will think he is fit to appear in public if he has merely taken a bath. A sacred place will be taken to consist of no more than a reservoir of water located at a distance, and beauty will be thought to depend on one's hairstyle. Filling the belly will become the goal of life, and one who is audacious will be accepted as truthful. He who can maintain a family will be regarded as an expert man, and the principles of religion will be observed only for the sake of reputation. As the earth becomes crowded with a corrupt population, whoever among any of their social classes shows himself to be the strongest will gain political power. Men will no longer protect their elderly parents. In Kali Yuga, men will develop hatred for each other over a few coins giving up all friendly relations. They will be ready to lose their own lives and kill even their own relatives. Uncultured men will accept charity on behalf of the Lord and will earn their livelihood by making a show of austerity and wearing a mendicant's dress. Those who know nothing about religion will mount a high seat and presume to speak on religious principles. Servants will abandon a master who has lost his wealth even if that master is a saintly person of exemplary character. Masters will abandon an incapacitated servant, even if that servant has been in the family for generations. Cows will be abandoned or killed when they stop giving milk. Cities will be dominated by thieves. The Vedas will be contaminated by speculative interpretations of atheists. Political leaders will virtually consume the citizens, and the so-called priests and intellectuals will be devotees of their bellies and genitals. Although Kali Yuga is an ocean of faults, there is still one good quality about this age. Simply by chanting the names of Krishna, one can become free from material bondage and be promoted to the transcendental kingdom.